Broken Bonds, the story of the Whitmans and Cayus, by Akash Gajar, Alex Brzezinski, and Camden Munger. The Whitman mission was a defining moment in both Cayuse culture and the definition of manifest destiny. The events exhibit not only exploration west, but also the encounters and exchanges demonstrated when at the mission, working through cultural and religious differences. The Second Great Awakening was the time period in which religion was booming within the white settlers. Marcus Whitman, a minister in training, met and soon married his wife, Narcissa Prentice. The two applied for American Board of Commissioners for foreign missions and were accepted as missionaries to save natives out west. It was said that God saved the settlers who believed in Christianity and it was their responsibility to save others from going to hell. The Whitmans believed it was their duty to save the Cayuse people. Marcus and Narcissa met with Henry and Eliza Spaulding and set off on a historic exploration across the continent. It was a defining trip because the party was the first wagon train to cross the Oregon Trail. In addition, Eliza and Narcissa were the first two women to cross America. The party had to overcome several obstacles such as crossing the Blue Mountain, the Rocky Mountains, and the Snake River. Luckily, the group was able to stop at many forts and native tribes where they were welcomed and could rest. Once at Fort Vancouver, the Spaldings and Whitmans separated, and the Whitmans went to Walla Walla to help the Cayuse, while the Spaldings went out to the Nez Pierce in what is present day California. The mission began with Marcus and Narcissa Whitman exploring the territory that once belonged to the Cayuse. The motives behind the Whitman mission were to explore the possibility of converting the Cayuse to Christianity. The tribe did not agree with the majority of the changes and only accepted new farming techniques. Cayuse's opinion on Christianity was that it was strenuous and useless. They also didn't like the idea of the white man's book, the Bible. Early on, they encountered many obvious cultural differences that enraged both parties. These everlasting encounters eventually led to the Whitman's tragic and brutal murder. Writings, Narcissa's writings continued to complain about, you know, how terrible the Cayuse are, how they're not interested in what the missionaries are doing, continues to stereotype them as savages um, who are uncooperative and heathens who won't embrace God. She has a very unfavorable view of the Cayuse at the beginning, and she maintains that throughout her time uh, there, the 10 years there. The Whitmans wanted to change everything within the Cayuse culture, and most importantly, their spiritual practices. Chief Tillicate and his tribe didn't want to exchange their culture for the Christian lifestyle. Marcus was often threatened with death and his unsympathetic rules were often why. This message was not clear to Marcus, so he kept attempting to change the native's identity. The other part of the Cayuse culture the Whitmans wanted to change was their clothing. So the Cayuse reaction to this, along with all the warnings they gave the Whitmans for at least a couple of years, making it crystal clear that they were unwelcome, and the Whitmans ignored all those warnings. Um, and so then I think at that point, uh, probably some of the Cayuse believed that the only option they had to turn things around, to change the course of history as it was unfolding, was to violently expel the Whitmans. The Cayuse did not change to traditional white clothing, so the Whitmans prohibited anyone not wearing such clothes into the mission building to force a change. The tribe attempted to earn compensation from the Whitmans and demanded payment for the land and resources. However, this proposition was quickly rejected by the missionaries and the Cayuse had to suffer the loss of their vital resources. Being missionaries was no easy task for Marcus and Narcissa. During their attempts at converting the Cayuse, they had a baby named Alice Clarissa. The daughter was accepted as a Cayuse girl by the tribe because she was born on Cayuse land, but she drowned in a river at a young age. Narcissa entered a stage of deep depression. The loss was heartbreaking to both parties. The Cayuse believed in shared community space, but Narcissa required privacy. The Cayuse found closed doors, fences and such as rude. The Whitmans also had made many policies against smoking on the mission site. The Cayuse did not agree with these rules and their retaliation often resulted in increasing conflict. Throughout the time at the mission, Marcus made several return trips back east to gain support and more settlers. The Cayuse were threatened by the mass amount of emigrants coming and tried several times to get the missionaries to leave. 
Dr. Whitman refused to leave, and the Kyrus retaliated with mild but frequent assault. Marcus Whitman had planted many crops throughout the mission site. However, wolves and other wildlife were constantly eating the crops. To prevent farther occurrences, Marcus poisoned the crops. The Kyrus stole some poisoned watermelons from the farm, unaware of the danger. This resulted in many Kyrus becoming ill, and they blamed Marcus and the missionaries for purposely poisoning them. They believed that the missionaries were trying to eradicate them to take over the land. The final blow that tipped the scale and caused the massacre was when the emigrant wagon trains brought measles to the mission site. The Kyrus were extremely vulnerable to the disease because they had no immunity to it. About five Kyrus died every day from this deadly disease. To make things worse, some Kyrus, Joe Lewis and Jacques Finley, spread rumors that the Whitmans were intentionally giving them diseased blankets. This made Marcus appear as if he was using biological warfare to terminate the Cayuse. His attempts at curing the Cayuse were unsuccessful, so action seemed intentional. In Cayuse culture, if the shaman fails to cure the sick patients, the shaman may be put to death. This is exactly what the Cayuse did. The massacre began on November 29, 1847, when there was a freezing rain and a thick fog all around that devoured the mission. A band of Cayuse warriors with concealed tomahawks and guns approached the mission building. Tillicut, the Cayuse chief who had lost his third son to measles the same morning, entered the sitting room and demanded medicine from Dr. Whitman. While they talked, another Cayuse named Tomahawks took out a tomahawk and hit Marcus with a blow to the back of the head. John Sager, one of the adopted Sager children, reached for a gun to retaliate, but was shot before he could reach one. The only other person in the room, Marianne Bridger, panicked and ran away. Then, the Cayuse dragged Marcus outside and shot him in the neck. Meanwhile, the killing outside the building was just beginning. Narcissa Whitman gathered the surrounding children to keep them safe. Marianne Bridger came to Narcissa, screaming that Marcus had been shot. Narcissa found Marcus in the mud and dragged him inside, where he passed away. Um, I think this type of incident you know, what we today typically know as the Whitman Massacre, um, it's hard to necessarily apportion blame as one side was good and one side was evil. Narcissa was then shot and wounded by a Cayuse sniper. The missionary sheltered upstairs while the Cayuse tried to break in. And when the massacre happens, who's the first one who gets struck? But Marcus. What do they do with Narcissa? They mutilate her body. And a long-trusted Cayuse friend named Tamsuki said he would lead them to safety. The group came downstairs, but Narcissa and another man were shot as they exited the building and the rest were taken prisoner. The group of attackers moved to the schoolhouse, where they found some hidden children. The rest were taken hostage. Some survivors sheltered in the mission house for the night. The hostages were kept for a month. No women or children besides Narcissa were killed. The news of the massacre traveled quickly. Weeks after, the Hudson's Bay Company exchanged the captives for guns, bullets, and tobacco. This would lead to the first full-scale Native American war. The Cayuse War would lead to many other wars that lasted throughout the next 40 years. The Cayuse War lasted 8 years. It was a relatively blood-free war, as there were only 13 casualties. When militiamen joined the fight, the Cayuse began to give up. They surrendered in April of 1850. In addition, they gave up five of their murderers. The five Cayuse were put on trial, which began on May 23rd. All 12 jurors and the judge for the case were white men. The only witness for the Cayuse side was Chief Stickus. The trial was not in any way fair. The Cayuse were sentenced to death by hanging. They were then hung in front of crowds by Marshal Joe Meek and buried in unmarked graves. Anson Dart, superintendent of Oregon Territory, proposed that the 256 remaining Cayuse and Walla Walla Indians be put on reservations. The Walla Walla Treaty Council was set up with the Cayuse and other tribes. They were urged to select a reservation quickly. Cayuse, Umatilla, and Walla Walla Indians ceded 4 million acres of land for $150,000 and a 512,000 acre reservation. Only 160,000 acres remained in 1930. Nowadays, the tribes have a resort and thriving business. The massacre also expanded federal control over the Pacific Northwest. It also caused many whites to leave the West. The bonds between the settlers and natives were broken. After the war, the mission site was fully burned down, 
and 20 years later, the Catholic missionaries took over.